DJ M Rob, bringing you an oldie but a goodie. Today we're going to talk about money, cash money, credit money, Benjamin. important we all use it and there's never a bad time to learn the younger the better because we got bills bills we got bills we have uh, you know things we want to buy there's tax you go to a restaurant there's tip you want some money off you want a coupon you want to know how to use your money you want to work hard to get it and when you've got it you don't want to lose it. So I'm going to teach you some things about money. And I hope you pack a lot of attention. Alexa, pause. All right. Let me minimize this face here. If I can figure this out. I'm on uh, round like seven of Screencastify. Took a while for me to figure out how to get my microphone to work today. So we're in the money chapter. And some people, they got to have it. So that's that's the OJs, by the way. So we are going to be in our markup, markdown packet. And you got to speak the lingo. So let's start with some vocab. Marking something up is an increase in the price. And we always like a markdown when they decrease the price. Truth be told, I think a lot of places or businesses may be like, uh, for example, in some furniture stores, they will mark the price up and then they will mark it down to make it look like they're giving you uh, a discount. Uh, the original price, original is something you start at. A lot of times that's called the wholesale price. That's why they call that BJ's Wholesale Club because they try to make it look like, which I'm sure they do, they're giving you more of the original price and not the usual marked up price that most retail stores do. Because the more people involved, the more people that need to get paid. The less people involved, the less money it should cost. Um, the selling price normally happens after a markup or a markdown. Uh, the markup rate, anytime I say rate, we're talking about the percentage, the percent. Uh, tax is money given to the government. Tax is money given to the government. And not every place is taxed the same. Different states have different tax rates. You will find that New York and California are very highly taxed. That's probably why so many people flee to Florida when they get older. Uh, tip, it's not just good advice. It's the money you give somebody for their services. Like when you go to a restaurant or you get your hair cut or you take an Uber. Um, a discount is like a coupon. It's money taken off and away. And if you know these definitions, you will know what to do with that money. For example, if a tax is given to the government, that's an additional cost to you. If it's a discount and it's taken off, you can take it away with a subtraction from, from your money. And as soon as I say percent, we're going to use the wonderful percent proportion. Percent, the definition of percent is for every 100, hence the over 100 on the left. And it can, is the same, is equal to a part out of a total. All right, it's got some interesting info there. You can read that on your own time. I'm going to do question four with you. I'm on my laptop, so I can't write quite as fast as I do with my touch screen. So let's do it to it. Here we go. A car that normally sells for $20,000. It's a pretty good price for a car, by the way. It's on sale for $16,000. The sales tax is 7.5%. There's all the information you know. Not a lot of words. Kind of makes the problem easier. Less talking. More walking. Here we go. What percent of the original price is the final price? I made it easier for you by underlining and making it bold. I heard what percent. So where there's a percent, I will write the what, which is an X. And it's of the original price. It started at $20,000. Using my Screencastify thing. Marker, I hope this works out. 
because I've already gone through 30 minutes of trials. Did I choose too many zeros? 20,000, one, two, three, four zeros. We're correct. We're, we're good. And it is currently $16,000. Ironically, I'm hoping to have my car loan paid off this month. Okay, and my division sign kind of got lost in there, so I'm going to rewrite it. So let's reread this again. What percent of the $20,000 original price is my $16,000 now? Every single proportion can be solved with cross multiplication and then dividing by the coefficient. And um, that's all good and well. But a lot of times when I'm looking for the percent, I like to just ch -ch change with my ch -ch triangle. This is like my magical symbol on the uh, calculator here. I'm going to use my ch -ch change with a ch -ch triangle. 2%, which would be the what? Second right parenthesis. So we put that in. N over D, 16,000 over 20,000. Get out of the fraction before you press second right parenthesis so it can be off to the side and not in the denominator. And it tells me the answer is 80%. That is 80% of the original price. All right. What is the discount rate? This is a separate question. Whenever I have parts A, B, and C, oftentimes the part B will be related to part A. In part A, I found that 80% is the percent that I'm going to pay compared to the original price. So I'm going to label that again. This is the percent I pay. I probably should have left some room here. What percent do I always start at? Like your grade always starts at, the price always starts at, that number is written there on the left of the proportion. Always start with 100. Well, if I started with 100% and I take away what I pay, I'm left with what I don't pay, which is the amount that I'm discounted. That just gave me 20% off. Not a lot of math involved for that one. Not every question has to be hard. This is off and cursive. I know some of you aren't used to cursive. 20% off. I like to box in my answer. So I'm going to go back and box in this one. I hope with Screencastify, if I move this, I can, uh, I don't think that's going to work. I knew it wouldn't work. Why did it do it before? All right. So if I get rid of this, can I move the screen? Oh, uh, you got to be kidding me. Oh, it moved. Sweetness. It's a little awkward, but there we go. Okay. Um, by law, sales tax has to be applied to the discount price. Would it be better for a consumer if the 7.5% sales tax was calculated before the discount? Why or why not? Okay, so a lot of times if I ask a question, Let's just do all the work to answer it. So I wrote down this time, instead of my percent proportion, I did purdy. Purdy's great when you have the rate and the total. The rate of the tax I have and the total I definitely have. And since we're going to the side, I'm cool with um, using the text box. A lot of you love the text box. Please don't use the text box when you're doing a proportion because it's really hard to write stuff up and down and we really need to label our proportions. So text box is okay for purdy. Do not use a text box for a proportion. Okay, the part we are looking for is the tax. And we want the tax um, after the discount. So that would be um, the, t the tax rate is 7.5% of, which is times, which is in my formula anyway, the um, amount after discount was $16,000. And we put it in the calculator, 7.5, second left parenthesis, because I am given the percent, there's no cha-cha changing, there's no cha-cha triangle. Times 16,000, you get um, 1,200 bucks of tax. X is a percentage. The more you spend, the more you spend, the more you have to pay. 
the lower something is, the lower amount you have to pay. But the tax percent is always the same. If you're in the same state, the, the, the rates change depending on which state you're in. Now, if we were going to find the tax um, before we took the money off, you probably already know which one's better, especially after we did that work. The tax is 7.5% of the original, which was $20,000, which was more money. By taking the same percent of more money, it should be more money. And the proof is in the calculator. Seven and a half times 20,000 is $1,500. But we didn't apply the C. This one's after the discount and this one is um, before. And then we would have to do, let's see if I can pause this. Okay. Well, I didn't do, um, that's just the tax. So tax is additional money. So I'm going to pay this $20,000 for the car. And I have to pay the tax and means plus. So now it's going to be 21500 but I have a discount. Okay, so with the discount, I take 20% off and I can do that 20% and subtract it or I can just do like I did in part A and just pay the 80% that's left. When you take 20% off, you pay 80%. So what is 80% of the amount we have to pay? 21 and I get, what do I get? 17,200. And I really should put units here. This is money. I pay that. That's my final price after the discount and after the tax, or after the tax and then after the discount. Okay, over here, we didn't do the final price. So let me go back and do the final price. So it was $16,000 after the discount. And I still have to pay tax, which is based on the discount. That comes out to be 172,000, uh, 17,000, I mean 17,200. It actually comes out the same amount. It isn't gonna happen all the time, but we only did one discount. So they, they do want things to do after the discount because sometimes you get extra discounts and that changes everything. And I'm totally going to be asking you one of those questions during this packet. So it says um, it comes out the same. For this example, with one discount, the amount is the same either way discount first or tax first okay for this example and it's always good to, to when you go to explain something it's always good to use some numbers show me the numbers show me the money it looks like i had another section here write an equation applying the commutative property to support your answer for part C. Do you remember the commutative property? The commutative property changes the order. And in part C, we talked about the order. So, purdy's great when you have the rate and the total. So, P equals R2. So, we're trying to find, um, we're doing the part that's tax. So, so let's find the, the, the final cost, okay? We're going to find the, what part is the final cost. And one way we did it was um, we did the first way. We did 7.5% times 1,600, which from part A comes from doing 80%. Oops, I wrote it as a decimal. I can write it as a percent. I might pause this for a second here. All right, thanks for bearing with me there for a second. 
let's just talk about the tax. Okay, so let's let me just clarify. Instead of doing final cost, which is more stuff, we'll just talk about the tax. So we're going to compare the tax. So 80% of, I'm going to pay 20% less. So I'm going to pay 80% of the original $20,000. So that's me finding the discount first. So I'll come over here and label it. Here's my discount. It's always good to label. It makes more sense, even for somebody who's been doing this for a while. And I'm going to do the tax based on that. So 7.5% of that. Of means times seven and a half percent. Yes, I know this isn't the nicest problem ever, but not on everything in life is nice. So if you put that in the calculator, you get you do it, you do it, you do it. You're getting the same thing as me. You get twelve hundred bucks, right? All right. So let's do. Um, okay, let me just label this discount. Price, and then this here is the tax percent. So I did seven and a half percent of the new price, which we, we both know is 1600 bucks. So if I come over here and I do the same thing, find tax, I do the tax rate first instead of second, seven and a half percent of uh, the original was what, 20,000? I was supposed to do a discount, so out of that, I will do 80%, so it's in a different order, hence commutative. I'm still going to end up paying the same amount. And you could check me in the calculator. If I make a mistake, you could message me. It's not like I haven't made mistakes in other videos. So if I'm going to label this right here, this is tax first. And then I did discount later. Still came out the same amount in tax and you know from my previous example even uh if i broke it down by pieces and you see different tax amounts i'm still going to pay the 80 percent of that which was going to lower how much i'm paying in the taxes and i'm still going to end up paying the same amount okay so the, the great thing about math is there's multiple ways to look at it and maybe at the same time maybe that's not so great maybe it's like oh gosh i wish i just had one way to do something but I like options personally, which is one reason why I really like math. So I hope that um, all of this recorded because I'm going to watch some football now. And I'll have to record this another day if it didn't work. Okay, you guys are going to do the rest. And when you need any help, you're going to ask me about it in a Google Meet or in class. And we can do some together. Bye. Go Bills.